In this video, I'll cover 10 ways I plan on making money this year. As an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, it's important to have a diversified stream of income so you aren't relying too much on one specific source. Especially as someone who makes YouTube videos full time, you never know if people will stop watching your videos, if the algorithm will stop showing your videos, or maybe your entire channel could get deleted out of nowhere. So maybe these ideas will inspire you to try something similar, or at the very least, give you insight into why I may not post every week. My wife, my beautiful wife, Rachel and I have been writing a TV show for the past two and a half years or so, and it's gone through many iterations and consultations to get it honed to the point where it feels like we've put together a strong pilot with developed characters. We finally finished writing the script a few weeks ago and are currently working on developing our pitch to try and sell it. I've looked into how much creators can get paid for selling their pilot script, and it seems to vary greatly and depends on a lot of factors like what network or platform it will live on, if you take on additional responsibilities throughout the show's lifespan, like show running or producing, and just how well the deal is negotiated. I believe 30 minute scripts are often bought for around $27,000, sometimes less on cable networks or digital platforms. But if you have a lot of involvement in the show's success, you could make millions. So. Let's hope for the latter, but uh, I'll keep my expectations in check. We also have a second show we started writing as well, so if one show isn't right for one network, the other one may be a good fit. It just increases our chances of something working out. So if you've been around my channel for a while, this shouldn't come as a huge surprise. I made a great return from day trading in 2020 and 2021, but this year the market is completely different. It's a lot easier to trade during a raging bull market and a much different story when there's a lot of fear news driven price action and a lack of trend to follow through. But I do spend about 40 hours a week studying, charting, journaling and trading. And I hope this year will be a good one in the day trading department. I don't currently have any profit goals. Rather, I am just trading what the market gives me and not forcing anything to reach any arbitrary profit goal since I don't rely on this income to cover my living expenses. In a similar vein, I will continue adding to my long-term stock portfolio. This is something I've covered a few times on this channel already, so I won't go into too much detail, but the basic gist is I have a portfolio of a few ETFs and a few stocks, and I contribute on a monthly basis and just let it do its thing. If we have a prolonged bear market, it's certainly possible that it won't actually make me money this year, but since it's for the long term, I'm not concerned about short term fluctuations. I also don't have to worry about buying the dip or whatever, since I'm continually making those recurring deposits because over time it will be better than having it sit in cash. All right, I maybe should preface this with a trigger warning, but I am talking briefly about NFTs and it's kind of a polarizing topic, but oh well. Back in September, I spent about $10,000 on some JPEGs and well, my plan was to eventually sell them for profit. I sold three this past weekend for about a 10X profit, which was pretty cool, but a few others I won't be able to sell for a profit, but that kind of comes with the territory. Also, the price of these NFTs are in Ethereum, so as the value of Ethereum fluctuates, the value of these NFTs do as well, so that's a consideration at play. I will do a full video about these once I've sold the most valuable ones and talk about it in more detail, so be on the lookout for that video if that's something you're interested in. Back in September of 2020, I mentioned this. I was thinking about making a music production course on Skillshare, so if you would want to see like behind the scenes, the making of a course for Skillshare, let me know in the comments and I can try to make that happen. And well, I never got around to making that course, but I did start writing it and my goal for this year is to film and release it. Rachel and I did do a Skillshare's original class with them, which was commissioned by Skillshare. And that also means they promote it differently than normal classes, but you do get paid on how many minutes of your class are watched by premium members. So our originals class we did back in the fall of 2020 has over 9,000 students and has earned over $15,000 in royalties, which is pretty cool. So I want to release another course, probably not something commissioned by Skillshare, but just something I write and film and upload on my own like any other teacher on the platform would do and then see how well that performs. I would hope for it to earn at least $300 per month. So if I get that course out, I will definitely share that process here on this channel and let you know how it goes. Speaking of music production, I realized in all of 2021, I did not upload any new music for licensing, which was a shame. I'm a contributor to Artlist where members can download my tracks for use in videos or podcasts or whatever. And this usually amounts to about $1,500 per month. And obviously the more music I have available, the more money I will make. And the kicker is I have about 20 tracks just about ready to be uploaded and never found the time to actually doing it. Once I finish production, I usually send it out to a friend to mix and master. And then I create cover art, fill out a spreadsheet of metadata, and then Artlist will process it and eventually publish it on their site. 
The slowdown happens when I start second guessing if a song is good enough to be released or if I'm 100% done with production or if I should go back and punch it up. And sometimes I just don't know. So I procrastinate and come back months later with fresh ears. I also try and make sure I have a vocal and instrumental version of each track because you never know what a customer will need. And oftentimes you don't want vocals to get in the way of any dialogue in a video. But I finally finished up a synth wavy pop album that I'm excited about releasing called Endless Nights and I believe that should do well on our list. I also teamed up with a subscriber named Lil Miss Beats for a track on my next Lo-Fi Chill album that I'm also really excited about releasing. I just need to find the time to get it mixed first. A little taste. What's that? Do you want a taste? All right, well, since you asked so nicely. Don't say, don't, don't say. All right, that's all for now. I don't wanna waste your time talking too much more about music, but in order for it to continue being a nice little piece of revenue, I need to release more music. Since I went a whole year without anything new, my streaming revenue has dropped from three to $500 a month to somewhere between 150 and $200 per month. So more music, more revenue. So this is a pretty big one. On our photography channel, Mango Street, this was never really something we thought about just because it didn't account for that much, but on this channel, it's actually pretty significant. I've done several videos breaking down how much we make per thousand views across three different channels and everything, so I don't wanna bore you to death, but this year, this channel has generated about $12,000 in AdSense revenue so far, down from the previous year, but it's all good. I don't wanna burn out or make videos I don't really care about, and as you may be able to tell, I've got a lot of other stuff going on. Too busy being an entrepreneur. Sorry, Dave, I had to. I would love to continue growing this channel because I genuinely do enjoy making these videos. All right, so again, YouTube related, but this time it's from brands paying us to do ad reads or sponsored videos or things like that. And most often this is for our photography channel, Mango Street, but I do occasionally do some on here and I do have a new sponsor that you'll be hearing from very soon. And I know as a viewer of YouTube channels, these ads can be annoying. You're being sold to all day, every day by everyone and everything. So that's why we try and only do ads from brands and services we genuinely like. We turn down a lot of things that just aren't a good fit, and we try to have some fun when we do them. Did that just say SoundCloud rapper? Next. And while you probably aren't interested in hearing about Squarespace's award-winning whatever right now, they have allowed us to have some peace of mind with reliable income for our business. And without companies like that, we just wouldn't be able to make the videos we do. I am projecting about $200,000 in revenue this year from brand deals across our three channels. Last but not least, we have editing presets for photographers. We've released three collections over the last four years and are finishing up our next collection now. Since it's a digital product that customers download, some photographers may slap presets together for a quick cash grab, but we really spend a lot of time making them as good as they possibly can be. If they aren't something that we would happily use on our own photography, we don't release them. For this collection, we wanted to emulate the look of different film stocks, so we shot seven different film stocks with a digital photo of the same subject so we could really craft the look we wanted in Adobe Lightroom. But it turned out it was actually pretty difficult to get the edits to work well across photos of different subject matter and different lighting conditions, so it's taken us a year and a half to develop. Now, some YouTube channels sell tens of thousands of dollars of t-shirts and hoodies or cooking knives and pans, but for us, it's photo presets. I anticipate $40,000 in sales this year, but of course, we'll have to wait and see. That just about wraps up everything. Of course, I'm mostly just calculating top line revenue and not taking into account any expenses or hours of work involved. But as always, the goal here is to be as transparent as possible and keep you up to date with my various ventures. If you would do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button on this video, that'll really help this channel out and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.